right. Well, welcome everyone to the second edition of Tea Time with Matt Sturbins. Uh, Matthew, welcome back to Mount Crested Butte. Thank you. Uh, seems like it was just a year ago when we were sipping black tea together, uh, as, which is your signature drink. Yeah. Um, you know, I was a coffee drinker yeah. for a while, yeah. and it just caused havoc in my stomach. Yeah. So rather than diluting my caffeine intake, I went up a notch and just started, you know, simmering tea. Okay. And I've been, I've been pretty steady with it for a minute, yeah. Um, we're just going to get this, we're going to clear the air. I am upset with you that this year there is no oat milk. I understand. Well, last year I was staying up here at Mount Crested Butte, which gave me an opportunity to go back to our chalet and steam up a fresh batch. Whereas this batch was made approximately 7 a.m. And it's now approximately 9.30 p.m. <laughs> so hats off to Stanley. Yeah. And here we are. Here we are. I'm just saying, for next year, let's bring back the oat milk in the black tea. I'm done with that. Okay. Yeah, I like that. It's on tape. We got that on wax, you've promised. So um, now that that's out of the way, we can get on to the second most important order of business, which is to talk about what is going on with Wonder Alpine. <sighs> Man, to think it's been a year, I was, we were just kind of reminiscing last year's Blister Summit upstairs. And, you know, in the time that has lapsed since then, we've left what was like a, a multi-unit facility that encompassed maybe 6,500 square feet. We now have a footprint of 43,000 square feet, of which we don't occupy about 14,000, but it's for future growth. Nevertheless, we're in a massive facility now. Um, probably doubled our Salt Lake headcount, if not tripled. Um, and that's right in line with like our production numbers. So there's been a lot of evolution in a short period of time with the brand. Um, obviously the skis have been a primary focus of ours from day zero. Um, we wanna showcase and animate the biotechnology uh, materials that we're able to build, uh, utilizing the Algal Tech platform and diversifying now into snowboards. So, you know, we were able to come to market with our third shape um, this last fall, which we debuted here at the Summit last year, the Reason 120. Yep. Outstanding. This is my personal pair. Huh. I'll be taking it with me when I leave. Okay. This isn't a test pair. It's mine. Wait, so is that is that a 191? It is. Yeah. Okay, because I had to ski a 184 huh. at this Summit because I was told a 191 was not available. But now I learned that's not true. Well... I mean, there is a little bit of range of motion thanks to this beautiful marker Duke PT. So we could squeeze you in, but maybe better to like get you your own setup okay. on the 91. <laughs> like, don't, don't touch my 191. Yeah. yeah, you know, I'm a big fan of, of you know, your boot midsole point. Yeah. It does change character a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'd get you down the mountain probably in this, but you'd have a better time if I actually had a proper setup. So yeah, we debuted the 120. Yeah. Um, we knew the factory move was, was coming up. Um, and obviously ambitions moving towards snow was growing. We talked a bit about that kind of off camera. So cool to be actually, you know, stand in front of you today and present what we've been able to muster up so far with boards, you know, you know, all four of these products are, are still prototypes in some capacity, you know, and that's, what's really cool about our size. You know, we're constantly iterating, developing new solutions. Um, we're not trying to tackle it all at once, but you know, um, with the boards, it's been a huge new like spool up of activities and it's really challenged us you know there's a lot of inserts in those split boards you know and um, luckily we do have the mechanical prowess to pull it off but it's just time you know even if we have designers who've been building boards for decades it still takes time to get it right you know and, and build a you know a collection that looks intentional you know for lack of better words so um yeah it's been a big big year for us um We've gotten great recep uh, reception on how the material has been performing in the market. You know, we're, I guess you consider us a varsity team player now. You know, we're going to be entering into our fourth, you know, uh, commercial cycle. Um, so that puts us on, you know, square in the JV, you know, three years on, under our belt. And um, yeah, it's cool. You know, we're, we're running into consumers on the slopes. We're seeing people on the up track. We're seeing owls out there, you know, mm -hmm. we're seeing little snowy owls which is really fun. And, um, and yeah, we've actually been taking a lot of the product on the road too. We've been doing a lot of these, um, you know, kind of like remote roost events, yeah. 
working with Evo, and obviously hosting roost events ourselves in Salt Lake. Despite a long wall of high pressure, you know, we got to ski a lot of radical terrain, avoid a lot of, you know, unnecessary avalanche concerns and stuff like that, and just kind of see it and ski it. And the skis have been doing really well and providing a good platform to, you know, build a, build a, strong, build a strong collection of products. Well, and coming back to the factory, I got to stop by, and I'm trying to remember when that was. Things are a bit of a blur these days. Yeah. Um, that was actually fall. Sun Valley trip for you. Yeah. You, pop, you popped in on yeah. the way up, I think. I did. Yeah, it was in the fall time. Yeah. Yeah, we were under construction with a storefront that's now done huh. on the 500 West um, east, east facing side of 500 West. So that's real cool. We just kind of popped, um, that, you know, that grand opening with the roost event, uh, which occurred just a couple weeks ago, mid Feb. And we hadn't yet taken possession of the next big block of square footage to the North, which will, um, house the kind of the commercial, uh, material formulation business. So now that we're consuming a lot more material we need more space to ramp up formulation work you know where we're putting all the chemistry together and uh, till now we've been very you know bench top you know where we've been able to build our basis of needs and material out of buckets you know we started advancing into drums um, hopefully the blister community is aware that we have now commercialized our materials with dps um, they're considerably much larger brand than we are, um, consuming a lot of material. So we've had to like rapidly spool up big bulk commercial formulation work, and we don't have the space allocated to that yet. So material science is on site, um, but it's limited in how much it can put out until we give it some more square footage. So that so that's building. Um, you got to see the production floor. You got to see our fulfillment side. You got to see the offices. So now, now you'll be able to actually come and like explore the brand with the street front entrance kind of helps share more of the personality of the Wonder Alpine brand. And then behind it is the Checker Spot Design Lab, which kind of gives you the, you know, all the inner workings of how we're bringing the biotechnology materials to life into these outdoor products. Yeah. Let's go to the products. Love it. Yeah, so new this year uh, on the ski side, uh, we've revamped the Intention 110. Uh, we're, we're, we're staying true with the Intention model name we have just um, gonna use the modifier 108. So we're, we brought in the waistline a couple of millimeters. Um, big reason why we wanted to kind of revisit the Intention 110, obviously it was our first ski. You know, we came to market, we said, hey, we're putting, our, we're putting ourselves out there, we're a backcountry brand, we're making a 110. People are like, a one what? And we're like, no, trust us. Like, this is the movement that's happening. We, we need a little bit wider skis to ski year round backcountry, I, I, can, I can assure you. And we have, access to materials that will give us some lightweighting benefits. So it's not the same old, you know, full wood core ski. It's, it's got some new material. So we introduced the Intention 110 in the uh, summer of 2019, four sizes. One of our critical mistakes in doing so was that we underestimated the adult male demographic needs at the time. We made a 185 prototype and then we scaled sizes off of that 185, which ended up resulting in not having a second 180-ish size to offer. The second size was a 78 or longer a 92. So we've taken on a, quite a bit of feedback over the course of the last three years as we then went to introduce the Vital 100 and now the reason that people would really like to have something in between the 85 and 92. So rather than just like building another random length, just to squeeze in between those two sizes, we thought, okay, well, what else are we looking at? And so Narrowing the waistline a couple of millimeters, honestly, I don't feel like it takes a lot away from the flotation of the ski, but I do believe it gets into more of a um, numerical dimension that people are seeing a little bit more appetizing for backcountry mixed use. 110 is like almost a step too far for some categorical recognition. I think 109 and less, this gives people a perspective like, okay, it's a 108, okay, good. So I think the surface area still remains Obviously, we have a variety of, di of different lengths now to offer. So historically, and with all the skis to market to date, they've all been seven centimeter increments. So with the 108, we're introducing a six centimeter increment, obviously targeting a 188 length, which is what I have in front of you today. It steps down, well, it goes up to a 94, but then steps down to an 82. So now you have an 82 and 88. 
And then obviously we follow sequentially six centimeters below that. So I do that from longest to shortest. Since yeah, so the, the intention 108 will come in in 194 and then every six centimeters. So we're going to have an 88 and an 82. Yeah. So historically the 110 just came in an 85. Yeah. And for some people that was right in the sweet spot. For others, maybe a little short, maybe a little long. So now we have an 82 and 88 to kind of cover that adult male 180-ish range. Um, we, yeah, like I said, with a slightly narrower waistline, but also a derivative of testing and skiing a lot of this this reason 120, um, and sometimes, you know, inbounds, um, is just like the maneuverability of it. And uh, the turn radius on the, on the, the reason was intentionally made shorter to accommodate for its wider footprint. So with the intention 110, we were kind of hovering in a 185 length around 22 and a half meter radius. Good radius, you know, I mean, plenty stable at speed, still maneuverable to an extent. We made the vital, you know, a little bit narrower, so we extended the turn radius out. But we knew going to the 120, the extra waist, waist width, we wanted to create a little bit more nimble side edge. And I've actually really enjoyed it, honestly. Um, and mind you, I come from a, a long turn radius background. Um, so that was another thing that we wanted to, um, you know, we wanted to speak to our, our, our feedback loop, is that we're actually going to take a couple meters off the turn radius. So shortening up the turn radius down to what will be basically one meter longer than the reason. So in the 88, I think we're at a 22. In the 108, mm -hmm. 188 centimeter length, you're at a what? I think a 22 or a 21.5. So right now, historically, that would be like a 23, 24. So not a big, not a big bump, you know. It's not a big waist adjustment. It's not a huge size range uh, difference. Um, and it's certainly not a big turn radius impact, but enough to update the ski. Um, and we feel like that's fitting because we don't intend to make just another model because of this, right? So this will supersede the, uh, the intention 110 for next season. Flex patterns, materials, sure. those are the same between the 108 and the 110s? It's targeted to be, yeah. Obviously the 88 will be an all new ski. You know, we don't have the same size ski to reference. So we're looking closely at those flex graphs right now, partly why this is a prototype. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the goal is to try to keep the flex profile the same. Um, new materials, yes. <clears throat> Continuing with the algal core and algal wall, right? So those who are, you know, who've been following along in our journey, we debuted first of a kind, algal oil derived rigid polyurethane hard foam, which we incorporate vertically with Aspen stringers which we domestically sourced at Aspen. That made up the algal core, and that was our debut tech when we launched in the summer of 19. And then we immediately took that same base polyol of algal oil and converted that chemistry to a cast urethane. That introduced the algal wall. So then we were able to incorporate a whole ring of cast urethane, replace all that extruded plastic, get rid of all that waste stream, and infuse a hell of a lot more bio-based ingredients. That creates the umbrella of the algal tech. And so... You know, we're, we're continuing to iteratively improving both how we're rising foam internally, how we're formulating the urethanes to tune things specific to what we need. But then we started still looking inward and like, okay, well, we're building a lot more skis now. We've learned a lot more about how our skis feel with that kind of signature Wonder Alpine feel as a result of these construction innovations. And two, thinking about, well, is there another way that we can help lean out some of the carbon footprint that we're leaving behind in the manufacture of these products? And one of the opportunities was witnessed right there at the kind of the, the de-flashing, if you will, when you unmold a ski, you've got long cuts of, compos of, of, of cured composite material that has no other use but to be discarded. You know, historically, we just had to sit there and saw it in, a, you know, 12-foot sections and, and throw it in the dump, you know. And um, the stuff's not going to biodegrade super easily. You know, in molding the sidewall, we've got quite a bit of wood, fiberglass, some top film, you know, top foils as well as some rubber coming off from the bottom. And so we thought, why not grind this material up and do a particle size that we can actually do something with it? So we kind of been, you know, teasing at the concept for a little while. You know, you guys have had a concept ski here for a minute, um, but we haven't yet had the bandwidth with everything else going on to fully look at incorporating into serial production. So for the coming season, so fall 22, we're going to be introducing what's known as a spiral plate. And spiral is just a kind of a play on the concept of like a circular process where we're taking these post-production waste uh, flashings, grinding them up into five millimeter particle size, and then reconstituting them with more bio-based resin, pressing it to a certain density, 
and replacing the maple that's currently inset on the core to support the binding screw retention, now with this composite plate known as a spiral plate. So every new ski we make is coming from the waste stream of the ski we made before it. It's actually part of the cycle on the production floor, is that when you get done cutting your skis out, you go and grind them all up, repurpose that back into a particle size, and then repress those plates for the next cycle of skis that you build. So that's one of the ways that we're able to accommodate the direct-to-consumer distribution strategy is that we're constantly rotating out SKUs. So our builders will take a production order, it's called 10 pairs, over the course of whatever, depending on how efficient they are, two to three days. And they'll go and cut their raw materials, they'll laminate their skis, cut out, process their waste, then go over to tune, finishing, and ultimately packaging. And then we're constantly pulling molds in and out of different sizes so that we're always building up a certain amount of base inventory across the entire scope of range. So it's not just like big, you know, run all this step, you know, assembly line style. You know, we're trying to constantly um, rotate out the SKUs and use those builders, um, that their craftsmanship through the entire process so they can take ownership in the SKUs they build. And that's a small little like Easter egg, if you will, that we're incorporating into the SKUs for next season is a meet your maker QR code. So you'll be able to track immediately who bought, who, who made the skis that you've, cons that you've bought based on um, this little code that you can just, you know, log on and meet the profile of the, of the builder. So we take a lot of pride in the people, you know, we take a lot of pride in the craftsmanship. Um, we're debuting these materials. It's, it comes with a lot of trial and error. So when we have an opportunity to kind of shed some light on the people behind it, we love it. So that's kind of what's up with the skis. You know, the reason and the vital will stay unchanged. For fall 22. The Reason 120 and the Vital 100. That's right. Stand change. So we'll still have three skis, you know, and we still believe that that's kind of a primary core quiver for a backcountry skier. You know, high pressure. I was obviously skiing the, the Vital lights out every day. I could, you know. I absolutely love that ski in a reverse camber, um, which is just turns out to be a super cool ski. You know, 100 weight ski that's reverse camber. Kind of light for touring, but very stable, very floaty, very versatile. Um, for that weird spell of snow we had, it was a perfect tool. Obviously, intentions that go to right out of the gates. You know, your ski that you can pull out of the closet first day of the year and be the ski you're probably putting in the closet after the last day of the year. And then we know, you know, where the reason 120 fits. It's right there in, in those deep moments, you know, like we've had here, which is cool enough this week. There's yeah. like 18 inches out there off Kevlar Pass. This ski's been great. I skied the... 184 centimeter Love reason 120 a couple days ago yeah. yeah whole time i was like man sturbins if only he'd let me ski his 190 once no i wasn't thinking that <clears throat> skied well Good. um yeah Good. yeah so as part of the move also from you know kind of the humble beginnings of the checker spot design lab in salt lake to the newer shop um we've also brought on some new team members um, we recruited Alex Andrews to the team um, this last spring. Uh, Alex comes to the company with over a decade of experience in snowboarding from being a shop kid when I first met him in the Ogden Valley, eventually rising into the pro ranks with Burton, and then uh, most recently was the North American team manager. Alex is an absolute freak over snowboarding. I don't know a single person more passionate about the application than him. And it became a natural fit. When we were talking about getting into snowboarding, he was like, well, can I be part of that conversation? And, it, and sure enough, he was. You know, we were, we were starting to just like dabble with some prototype ideas and Alex was already chipping in, you know, with his two cents well before we even considered working together. And so after a couple of months of, you know, reaching back out to one another and just checking in, it was like, hey, like, are you guys, you know, interested in, you know, building a role? Sure enough, snowboard category leader, uh, Alex Andrews joined. And, you know, through that process, he exposed a lot of insights, you know, where we had kind of things kind of just like pinned, you know, against the wall. Here's where we want to go with it. Here's what things that we want to do. He brought in a lot of a lot of sense and experience to how to bring that product to market. And one of the big things that I think people find that is unique to Wonder Alpine, historically with the skis at least, is that in all of our models and in all of our sizes, we make them in two camber profiles, right? And you can see that differentiated typically by when you look at the tips of the skis, if it has an accent color tip, that's a cambered version. If it has a white tip, it's a rockered version, meaning that uh, rockered may be being the wrong term. Let's call it reverse camber. Yeah. 
So the absence of camber. So depending on your geographic point of, point of interest, where you ski, you may have a preference towards camber skis or reverse cambered skis. Um, and you may have a preference on that based on the waist width of the ski, right? So I don't ski only all reverse camber skis. I actually prefer some skis cambered versus others not. Um, and so we wanted to kind of think about how are we going to carry that type of concept forward into snow. And so that's how we've arrived to what we have in front of you today, which is, you know, we have a solid as well as a split. We're going to keep both of those with the same form, basically having a bit of camber underfoot, rocker tip and tail. Obviously, it's a directional, intentional shape. You know, we're thinking backcountry skiing. So if we're talking about a solid board, we're not necessarily thinking about that as being like your inbounds board and then this being your backcountry board. Our point of view is backcountry only, right? Yes, they work great inbounds, but that's for the consumer to experience. Our main goal in the design of these skis is to create the most mobility possible with a staple platform that really accentuates the descent. And so with a solid, you got to think about the communities like, say, Jackson or Driggs, where they're using the pass as a way to gain vert, way to access the backcountry terrain. It's not as common to see people putting in up tracks in those environments because they have the benefit of roadways. Whereas like, you know, here in Crested Butte or in the Wasatch, everything's an up track. So of course you need to have splits. So that's a way that we're able to kind of show the diversity as we have with skis, but complement it for snow. So we've got the, basically the Bell Air, which is the uh, solid on the far liquor's left, and then the Bell Tour, which is the white model. The Bell Tours are split. They both have the same geometry. Um, depending on the, the length, it's around a 26 waist, 7.8 side cut radius. And there we're, we're making them in a handful of lengths, dropping down as low as a 48, 52, 56, 59, 64. So um, the waist width will grow proportionally as they get a little bit longer just to cover the, the span of the bigger footprint, you know. But um, yeah, we're really honing in a lot on, on the performance of these boards. And, and as we started to kind of conceptually bring these products to market, you know, Alex was desperate for a little bit more internal feedback. And what's cool about our crew is that it started with obviously myself, but then my first real full-time recruit on the product side was Daniel Malmrose, who's our now senior director of product innovation. And he has history building boards back to Jamie Lynn. You know, he helped build up the, the factory with Lib. He's a big part of the Signal brand. And, um, you know, he's got a lot of experience, but he, he needs that feedback loop too, you know, because he's an engineer. And so talking with Alex, we we're like, well, how do you want to, you know, support this, this division of business? And um, he, in, in, in conversation with Pep Fujis, was like, yo, we should reach out to Nick Russell. And Nick Russell um, has become recently the first Red Bull indoor split boarder which is pretty cool, right? And he kind of saw that there was an opportunity for them to, you know, authenticate their interest in backcountry snowboarding. Um, and he, you know, shares a sponsor with Pep, with Patagonia. He has a very, like, strong humanitarian environmental point of view. Um, he lives in Truckee, which, you know, that's, that, that, that speaks to my past as well as, as, as helps kind of narrow the gap between where we're at in Salt Lake with the Design Lab and Wonder Alpine and then our Checker Spot headquarters in Alameda, California, it's cool to have somebody like in the Sierras. Um, and so, yeah, we, we were fortunate to be able to catch Nick at a time where he was looking to break out from Jones and, and we got him on board and um, both literally and figuratively, we started building boards immediately with his feedback, shipping him boards. And, and you know, he's been spending a lot of time helping us refine the flex profiles and geometries and, and keeping an intentional backcountry point of view. You know, he was a, he was a comp snowboarder from the East Coast in pipe and then like all of a sudden just backcountry that's me you know and we had a really cool conversation with yeah him. dude the blister chat was amazing yeah um i really enjoyed that conversation and he was we wrapped and he's like man come on out you know to Truckee and we'll right. we'll go get in the mountains and yeah. i'm like i'm i've filed that one away <laughs> like totally. i i wanted to make yeah, that yeah. happen yeah yeah no i mean he's super easy to get to know and um and he wears his heart on his chest, you know, or on his sleeve. And he's, he's super, super honest and humble. Um, and he's been a great point. Like, he's been a great frame of reference for how we're guiding, you know, the, the, the category. So, um, yeah, we still got a little bit of work to do. You know, we're obviously getting excited um, to reveal what this category has become. You know, there's still a lot more that needs to get put in place before we debut. And the collection typically um, 
renews on the anniversary date of the brand. So July 8th time frame. every summer we'll kind of flip the script on the site, show everybody the new, the new looks and, um, you know, most likely there'll be a much deeper point of view on how we've come to the certain shapes that we have. Um, any changes that may happen between now and then will be very minimal. So we've got testers here at the Blister Summit for the first time ever riding the boards, which yeah. is super cool. Um, obviously, we hope to see that that community grows in the yeah. future. Um, we don't discriminate, you know, stand straight, stand sideways, stand for something. You know, that's kind of our, our tagline, introducing snowboarding. Did you come up with that? I did not. One of our advisors did. That's pretty good. Yeah, a buddy of mine. Um, his name is Ben Pruce. He's had a long history in snowboarding, and, and he texted me one day, where's my Wonder Snowboard? Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, funny you bring that up. I was just talking to Daniel. He's like, yeah, well, quit talking about it. Start doing something about it. Before you know it, you're going to just be another ski company. And that has never been the goal for us with Wonder Alpine. And then even at Checker Spot, we wanted to build a brand that showcased our technology capabilities, and we wanted to do it across the spread of all outdoor. So while, yes, we do have winter sport applications like skis and snowboards, we're tooling up, hiring um, really talented people to help us enter into the textile space, as well as in Alameda, we're working on food, nutrition, and personal care products, all using the algal oil ingredient in defense of like how this material can replace common petroleum with a much leaner carbon input with better performance. You're making food now? We want to get into making food, yes. Like French fries? Well, we, you could use the oil for, to make French fries. You consumed the oil. I did. Yeah, you took a vial of our oil and you drank it in the headquarters. Here. <laughs> and look it, right? I mean, yeah, I your skins never look better. Thank you. You want to help benefit drinking out the oil. I, I attributed it to my once a year consumption of black tea. Yeah, so maybe yeah, it was the algae oil. Um, you know, like skincare, right? I mean, we've been wearing it all. Well, maybe it doesn't look like it, but I promise you, I've been trying to wear it. Um, it's just an inferior product, right? Here's an opportunity. Look at this face. Shouldn't be nearly as burnt. So um, there's a lot of opportunity to expand the portfolio and reach of our algal technologies. Um, and so we're excited about these, you know, the, the growth opportunity with outdoor, not just specifically to polyurethanes and hard get applications, but this is our start, you know, and this got the conversation started. Um, and obviously, um, was enough to garner the, the recognition and certification by B Labs to become the first B certified ski brand. Um, obviously, that, that certification carries over into our snowboards and will carry forward in all the future products that we develop as well. Hmm. That's a lot. That's a lot you got going on. Um, yeah, it is a lot, but it's compartmentalized because this is all in, in, in scope to garner adoption, right? We are everything but exclusive. Yeah. We, it's, it's not in our language. It's not in our vocabulary. We're an inclusive, op- oppor- we're an in, and we're an, we're an inclusive opportunistic partner. And we have developed application prowess internally with material science and clever engineers to showcase what we can do for others. And the DPS opportunity speaks to that. And we want to continue to grow the adoption of our materials with other brands, brands that are here at the blister right now. I don't think the industry is going to get anywhere trying to do everything by itself. I remember that from last year's summit, that there were conversations going on. And I think I mentioned this in our video last year that founders of companies were coming up to me saying that they had talked with you and they thought this was pretty interesting. And so, um, no, uh, the chairlift rides, well, yes, they still include this, a similar level of banter around yard sales and whatnot. (laughs) They have now taken a whole nother meaning, which is like, Hey, tell me more about that, you know? And, and as a follow up to some of the relationships that I, I forged here at the summit last year, I brought materials to those people. Um, in the springtime and showed them like, here's where we're at. And I'm not saying that maybe this is the opportune time for them to take it on, but this is just where we're at. And let's check back in in a year from now, because I'm going to be in a whole year better than I am right now at that point. And at some point our, our circles will intersect. And so, you know, we use this as an opportunity yeah, to not only showcase the, the new geometries, the new applications that we've come up with ourselves with Wonder Alpine, but also to rekindle some of those conversations with other brands and talk about what we've learned over the last year. And partly because of the, the brand itself, it's a, it's a forceful learning mechanism, right? We're not relying on the feedback loop from our partners to further iterate and improve our materials. 
we're learning that firsthand and then sharing that information with our partners to help them avoid pitfalls. So it's been cool. I mean, our from our very first conversations when the brand was kind of brand new and we were talking about this and it was sort of like this is built into the DNA of this company that this is going to be iterative. And so the story from those first conversations that people can go listen to the podcasts on, it was like, um, we're just making an announcement of this is what we're going to do, but it isn't like, here's the one new dance move we have that we'll just be going forward with for the rest of our days. And it's cool to see the progression of this, um, moving into from skis to snowboards and into other products. And, and, uh, you're kind of, I'd say so far staying pretty true to what was announced or, or fulfilling what was an announced in those first conversations that we have on tape. So yeah, cool. pretty cool to see that happen. Yeah, it's good. It's good. To, you know, the reputation means a lot to us, you know, and, and we got a lot of, we, a lot of people threw some shade our way when we first came out with a um, rigid foam integrated wood core. Yeah. They're like, Oh, like, cool. Good for you. You incorporated chemicals into a wood core. And I was like, ease up, like you got to start somewhere. Yeah. You know, when I showed up at Checker Spot, we had a silo cup of foam, you know, with ambitions to go after surf. And I had a temper expectation straight up. I was like, listen, surfboard is a lot of foam. <laughs> and um, I have a concept that I think we can incorporate foam in a meaningful way that's not as um, large of a component of the overall build. And that gave us a basis to start working. You know, and once we were able to land that 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 polymer, we we're able to start understanding the chemistry and the versatility of that chemistry, which led to the algal wall, the cast urethane. And it's those iterative improvements that start to really exponentially ramp up the overall bio content of the ski and how that starts to really play a role in differentiating ourselves in the space, but also providing a platform to differentiate our partners. So it's been cool. I mean, textiles is going to be a big deal. We already have commercialized the materials um, for wicking, and we are in partnership with Gore since last January to develop an alternative to C6 chemistry for DWR using our material as a PUD or a polyurethane disbursement. So if we can get off of fluorine in terms of water repellency, that's going to be a huge win for mankind because uh, that's obviously damaging fresh water streams, and it's becoming a big hurdle you know, for manufacturers. So we're excited about the work that we're doing there, and I think that will be another just you know, uh, opportunity for the outdoor market to realize how this algal platform can really play a role in performance uh, in integrated materials in their everyday use and gear. You know, it's we're unwilling to sacrifice the performance, but we all feel very conscious about the footprint we leave behind. So we're psyched that we can leverage this, you know, microorganisms, natural abundance of oil and incorporate it in place of petroleum in doing so. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Um, thanks for telling us about it. It's been my pleasure. Yeah, nice to see you again. Can't wait to have this conversation a year from now and think about like, well, boy, a lot's happened since then, you know, because I can't think about trying to move a facility again or all these other things. So I know we're not going to just like stall out. Yeah. So it's going to be pretty cool <clears throat> to think about what our team will be able to do in the next year or so. Yeah. Well, hey, good luck to you and the team. And uh, yeah, look, for, I do look forward to the... 365 days from now or something. Yeah. Totally. yeah. Right on. Well, let's get some ski days in between. Ah, sounds good. Right on. Thanks, right Jonathan. On, thanks. See ya.